What's going on guys? Mike here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Horizon's all-in-one ETF, ATQT, and how it's outperformed Vanguard's VEQT and BlackRock's XUQT, and talking about the main differences as to why this has happened. Now, if you're new to the channel, I do have some videos specifically on XEQT. Uh, if you're interested in watching, and it goes over why I personally hold over $20,000 uh, all in one ETF, such as XEQT. So, to just kind of recap the year, I'm just going to share my screen here, and you'll see how HEQT has gotten near 21% year to date, as well as VEQT at 15 and XEQT being at 14 And of course, or XEQT being at the bottom, and that's the one that I hold, unfortunately. Well, I wouldn't say unfortunately, but it, it didn't do as good as the others. Um, but, so before I go into the why, the why this has, uh, HEQT has outperformed, I do just kind of want to recap as to why somebody, such as myself, would want to have one of these EQT uh, all-in-one ETFs. So some of you may know, some of you uh, may be interested in knowing, so I'm just gonna do a quick recap. So particularly for like myself, a bi-weekly investor, uh, it's really nice to have an all-in-one ETF, such as these EQT uh, uh, ones, specifically because of the ease of it, right? So these particular funds will have over thousands of different equities or stocks and it's basically like one click buy, right? So you buy one share of XEQT and now you have exposure to 9,000 different uh, holdings specifically in XEQT. Um, so again, it's diversification, um, global exposure because these particular funds invest into the Canadian markets, the US markets, international, emerging, etc. right? So that's the primary reason as to why you would want to be in this particular fund or one of these particular funds so now why did this one perform so much better if they're just kind of all invested into the world right why would there be such a difference so getting into it when you look at horizons top 10 holdings for heqt you'll notice how again it has uh, the large cap 35 percent and the nasdaq 100 being at 10 percent now the reason why i want to highlight that is because that that would equal up to about 45 percent of weightings within the u.s and that is exactly what uh, uh, XEQT has. XEQT also has uh, about 45% exposure of, the, of its overall ETF um, to the US market. Now, the major difference, and this is where the performance really has shined through on Horizon this year, is that it's invested into large cap, right? So, and again, the NASDAQ 100. So when you compare that to XEQT, its exposure for the US market is through uh, IOT, ITOT ETF, which is the total US stock market, right? So that's a pretty big difference because the total US stock market is gonna have large cap, medium cap, and small cap companies within the ETF, right? So when you look at that, the horizon is gonna be in the round, somewhere between that 500 to 600 companies because there's gonna be some overlap between the S&P 500 and the large cap index. Uh, so it's somewhere between five to 600 uh, uh, holdings with, within the US at the 45% compared to the 45% of XEQT and, and very similar to VEQT at 2,600 different holdings, right? Because again, this one is doing large, medium, and small cap. So, uh, so when we're looking at the year-to-date performances, when Horizon has a larger um, exposure to the top seven companies in the S&P 500, such as Apple, which got 54% year to date, uh, Microsoft at 55, uh, Apple, or sorry, Google at 57, Amazon at 78, Nvidia at a whopping 244%, as well as Facebook at 186, and Tesla at 141%, right? So that's pretty substantial. Um, so this is why Horizon has done so well this year is because of their, their weightings on these particular companies because of the, the ETFs that it holds within the HEQT. Now, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Well, 
it all kind of comes down to what your personally, what your objective is for investing, right? So when I go back to mine, my my um, reasons as to why I went into XQT was for uh, the diversification. So when we're talking about the U.S. exposure, we're at 45% on either um, XQT or HQT, but I'm going from you know 2,600 different uh, holdings within the U.S down to somewhere between five to 600. Now, so you're kind of sacrificing that uh, diversification for the specific weightings into the top large cap companies in the US, which can be a good thing, but also can be a bad thing, right? Because what happens if, say, tech has a terrible year and that top seven uh, has negatives um, based on like, you know, being overpriced or whichever the case may be. So. Just kind of going back to the um, the year to date chart here, I just want to highlight like when I click on the three year uh, chart, you can see how they're very similar. So it's not that the the S and P five hundred outperforms every year compared to the total U S stock market, right? Otherwise, you would the three year chart would show very equivalent to uh, what the year to date was in twenty twenty three. So again. I really just wanted to kind of highlight this is because uh, some people, like I said, on say Reddit or other YouTube videos are making comments on how they're moving to HUQT now because it's a better, say, all-in-one ETF. And well, it's only better based on what your objective is in the investment, right? If you want to be centralized only on the top, say, 500, the S&P 500 of the US, then yes, HUQT is the portfolio or the all-in-one ETF for you. If you're looking for more diversification so that you have, say, more exposure to, say, small cap and medium cap companies within the U.S. stock market, then VEQT and XUQT are actually uh, more in favor for you because that's what they're investing in, right? They're more diversified compared to being uh, centrally weighted on the top companies within the U.S. So. I personally will not be making uh, the move to HUQT because my main objective was to be well diversified with XUQT. And I do believe long term, uh, the returns on small and medium caps will help outperform the top S&P 500 companies uh, long term. Because what were they before they became an S &P, or a part of the S&P 500? They were a small or medium cap. <laughs> So you can't just start as the largest company in the world. So the gains that can be made from small to medium caps can be quite substantial, especially if we're talking about the next Apple or the next Google um, and, you know, you have been waiting into that company before it hits its boom. So I hope this was informative. The reason, like I said, for this video is I wanted to make sure because people are kind of making the move on the fear of missing out. And I want to make sure that everyone is informed as to the differences between these particular funds to make sure that you guys are making the, the right choices for yourselves. So again, I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, definitely make sure you like the, the video as well as subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.